And now it is my pleasure to introduce you to our second honorees of the evening, Raquel and Michael Haas. Raquel and Michael are two of our most dedicated Vassar Center advocates, and we are so grateful for their tireless commitment to our work. As you will hear from them, their story is a story of combining the strength and courage of patients with the relentless work of teams of scientists to provide hope and better choices for future generations. So please join me in welcoming an inspiration to us all, Raquel. Thank you, Susan. It's an incredible honor for Michael and me to be here tonight. <clears throat> I'm not sure that my story deserves to be heard more than anyone else's, but I am a sucker for survivor stories, and I really have a good one. I was adopted, so I always wondered about my DNA, but I was healthy and active, so I didn't worry too much about it. When I turned 35, I did insist that my gynecologist start giving me annual mammograms because I was unsure of my medical history. After being called back year after year for second looks and being told again and again that it's nothing, in November of 2010, I insisted on a biopsy. I, I just had a really, really bad feeling. Just a week later, the doctor's office confirmed my worst fear. They said, you have very, 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 very early stage breast cancer, but it is nothing to worry about. I was 42 with two young children. That's a lot to worry about. Because of my age and my unknown family medical history, the doctor suggested that I do genetic testing. When I was told that I tested positive for the BRCA2 mutation, I had never even heard of it before. That diagnosis of BRCA changed my course of treatment. Immediately, my surgeon recommended a bilateral mastectomy. My oncologist asked me, are you done having kids? Because you should probably get your ovaries and your uterus out too. There are side effects, but because you are BRCA positive, I would highly recommend that you do it. My doctor was right. The surgeons found precancerous cells in my ovaries and my uterus. After a year of surgeries, I thought my journey was over. I started referring to myself as the Tin Man because the doctors had removed so many of my parts except for my heart. For four years, I was fine, but in the fall of 2014, during a yoga class, I felt a massive lump around my left armpit. In a million years, I did not think it was cancer, but it didn't go away. Einstein said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. I think the ninth wonder of the world is intuition. Thanksgiving weekend, I told my husband, Michael, that the cancer was back. I just knew. I called my doctors and they assembled my entire team. This is definitely not breast cancer. It's just not possible. It's not breast cancer. But in fact, it was breast cancer. And within days, they took out 44 lymph nodes, and all but 11 had breast cancer. The cancer had completely spread to my chest wall and up to my clavicle. I was staged at 3C, and stage 4 is usually fatal. The next phone call was to Susan Domchik and the Basser Center. Susan was that angel that just appeared over the telephone at all the right times throughout my cancer journey. <laughs> uh, the first thing she said to me was, Raquel, you're treat to cure. I didn't even understand what that meant at first, but those three words, treat to cure, became my most important mantra during my treatment, treat to cure. It meant that the doctors believed I could beat it. I did 16 weeks of chemo and more than 30 days of radiation. I don't have cancer now, but I know that I might again someday. 
I'm not here to scare you, but I do want you to understand that the research and the progress being made at the Basser Center is changing things for people like me. If I had known that I had the BRCA mutation earlier, I definitely would have had or insisted on a biopsy earlier. I probably, I definitely would have had a prophylactic bilateral mastectomy earlier or an oophorectomy earlier. The world is a really, really, really scary place right now. I worry about my children like we all worry about our children. I worry about their safety. I worry about their health. I worry about whether they had a good day at school. I would really love to stop worrying about both my kids having a BRCA gene mutation or the increased risk of cancer. I'm here with the very real hope that my children and other people's children will have more information and better choices. And I believe that the Basser Center is our very best shot at making that happen. Stories of surviving like mine, coupled with courageous scientific and philanthropic pioneers can change the world. It's ironic that we are all here gathered during the month of November. November is breast cancer month for me. It's when I received both of my diagnoses. It feels fitting to be here tonight during the month of November, trying to change the diagnosis and outcome for others. Having cancer taught me that if you don't advocate for yourself, you do not survive. I must thank Mindy and John and Shari and Len for advocating so fiercely on behalf of everyone that's affected by BRCA mutations. Their commitment, love, and friendship knows no bounds. I would also like to acknowledge and to honor Faith Basser and my best friend from high school, Sherry, who was diagnosed with breast cancer at the very same time as me the first time and passed away a month to the day after my last chemotherapy treatment the second time. Not everyone is given the gift of years, but their spirit and inspiration live on at places and nights like this and at the Basser Center. Thank you. When we found out Raquel was BRCA2 positive, I think that was almost more overwhelming than the original diagnosis of the cancer, especially because of the potential havoc that BRCA gene might have on our children. I felt helpless. I didn't know what this was, how scared to be, or how to fix it. While we had amazing care from our doctors at the Cleveland Clinic, we wanted to talk to people who were solely focused on treating BRCA-related cancers. We trusted Basser completely, Susan Domchek signed off on every decision we made. Susan, we are forever indebted to you. Thank you. The, the late night telephone calls, the reassurances, the chart reviews and guidance and the candor and friendship you brought to us and our family during what so many in this room know to be an unimaginably difficult experience. You know, we're at the hospital where Kel had chemo when you finish with your last treatment, you ring a bell to signify that you're done. I will never in my life forget the sound of that bell. That was actually the only chemo treatment that our kids attended, the last one. I think Basser is ringing the bell for all of those who are fighting BRCA-related cancers. I truly believe that together, we can prevent my kids and all of our kids from ever having to go through this. I want to thank the extraordinary Dr. Stephen Grohmeyer and Dr. Rizal Johan from the Cleveland Clinic who are here with us tonight. I want to thank our incredible children, Kyle and Alex, who are here. We love you so much. 
and all of you for being with us this evening. But most importantly, to my beautiful wife, Raquel, thank you for teaching us how to go through this battle with dignity and with grace. I love you so much. Thank you, everyone.